So the top three topics of questions I'm often asked related to my TTC journey is cost, sperm banks, and medication. My most recent video was about the cost. Today, we're going to talk about sperm banks. So oftentimes within this community, when you, it comes down to sperm banks, my TTC sisters are so secretive. They don't want to tell you nothing. They're not telling you where they went. You're not getting any information. And I used to be the same way until I thought about it. I was just like, hmm. So the possibility of somebody picking the exact same donor of, as me is probably one in 500,000. Two, we're buying sperm, cum, nut, whatever you want to call it. We're buying it from a freaking bank. You are not going to be the only person <laughs> to choose that profile. And the most important thing is, legally, they can't tell people who you picked. So why are we being secretive? So when it comes to the sperm bank, um, Our fertility clinic gave us a list of three sperm banks. One was in Seattle, um, then it was California Cairo Bank, and it was Fairfax Cairo Bank. We completely took the one in Seattle off our list because we couldn't find any information on it. So that gave us the uh, conclusion that either their success rates are low or their ranking is low, and we didn't want any parts of it. We were left to California Cairo Bank and Fairfax. The cost of the sperm is about the same. It's really comparable. Um, IUI sperm is your most expensive. IUI sperm can be anywhere between 900 and 1050 per vial. Um, IVF sperm can be anywhere between $500 and $650 per vial. Um, the difference is the in the price is basically the way they clean it, basically. Um, that's how it was explained to me. I really don't understand it. Um, if I find any information on it, I'll put it in the description area of this video. So that's that. Since... The cost of the sperm itself was comparable. We looked at other things. If we would have went with California Cairo Bank, we would have had to pay for shipping. Shipping was anywhere between $150 and $300. That's on top of the cost of the sperm. Um, Fairfax Fertility, since Fairfax is basically like an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes in traffic away from us, we basically had no shipping costs because we were able to pick up the sperm and deliver it to Alpha Tithi Clinic ourselves. Um, California Cairo Bank offer you some stuff like a picture and a profile, but it was very expensive to see those things. Fairfax Fertility offered childhood photos of the donor, a complete biography of the donor, um, something else, an audio of the donor, and it's a fourth option, and it was substantially cheaper than California Cairo Bank. So when it all came down to it, we chose Fairfax Fertility. Um, it was a little inconvenient going back and forth because the sperm may be in a capsule that's maybe that big, up and down, maybe that big, but it comes in a tank and the tank is maybe this big and this tank is in a box that's this big. <laughs> so we had to pick it up and it's quite heavy because it's, it's frozen, you know. Um, we picked it up from the sperm bank, we delivered it to our fertility clinic and then once they removed the sperm from the tank, we delivered the tank and the box back to the fertility clinic. It is a lot of back and forth, but I'll do it all over again, and I am going to do it all over again to save a couple hundred dollars. When it came to the sperm itself, um, if you know exactly what you want, 
the process is fairly easy because your fertility doctor, they give you a checklist of what you need to look out for when picking your donor, um, what blood type you need to use, um, your C, the CR, the CMV level you need to pick. They give you those things. So it's fairly easy to pick um, the, well, to, the process is fairly easy if you know exactly what you want. What I will say is the process is more difficult for minorities because it's not, we don't have a lot of options when it comes to donors. If you are okay with your child being biracial and if you're open to that, then the process is not difficult at all. You just log on, you create your profile, and then on the page, you pick all of the things you like. You check the blood type your doctor says the donor needs to have. You check the CMV levels your doctor says you need to have. And you select a race. If you don't care what the race is, you click all. And then it'll give you a list of maybe 100,000 donors. What I will say, if you are Caucasian, it is easier for Caucasians to find a donor because they have a huge variety. I don't think it's anything racist or anything like that. I just think that um, more Caucasian men are open to donating their sperm than African-American men are. At least that's my hope. I hope that's the issue. <laughs> but um, for my wife and I, it was fairly difficult because we wanted our child to be completely african-american we wanted he or she to feel like she looked like us we wanted um the child to have our color skin and things like that and what we noticed quickly is it wasn't a lot of options for us when we logged on it was hundred thousand donors 50 to hundred thousand donors once we clicked african-american that amount dropped from let's just say a hundred thousand to down to ten you know and then when you put in the blood type that your doctor tell you you need to use that 10 is going to drop to three so for us we ultimately had to look at donors of other ethnicities so our first donor was asian and actually, that donor gave us the best, um, the best cycle of eggs. But like idiots, we did not freeze. Um, and then when we went back the second round to get more sperm from him, he didn't have any at that time. So we had to pick another donor for our second IVF. And that donor, I believe, was Caucasian. Yeah, it was Caucasian, and all of those eggs died. And then our third IVF, that donor was, um, I believe, German and German and Hispanic or something. No, the third donor was the same race as the Kardashians. I forget the name of it. And that was an okay cycle, but definitely our first donor was the best. So our hope is actually when I get off this video, I'm going to log on and see if our very first donor has any more sperm and I'm just going to buy it and just hope and just hope for the best. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else. And then after you pick that, um, you can choose if you want them to have a certain color hair, a certain color eyes. All of that stuff is really, really easy. It's not as difficult as people make it seem. You choose your donor, you add it to your cart, you pay for it, you check out, and you're done. That's it. It's not a difficult process. It's more so a frustrating process because, in my opinion, when it comes to minorities, our pickings are very slim. But as long as you are open to the idea of a different race, it's a very easy process. Our want was an African-American, but when it all boiled down to it, we want to expand our family more. So the race of the donor really does not matter to us at this point as long as we create a healthy 
happy and thriving little human. So if you all have any questions or comments or anything, comment below and I'll see you guys tomorrow.